Hello, Nana here. Welcome back to Path of Exile. We are playing in the Harbinger League. And last episode, we cleared out the crematorium. And of course, I forgot to collect my reward, but we now have clarity as well as the lovely, lovely little convocation skill. So we can now summon our minions to us and everything nearby gets a lovely little energy shield bonus. We do uh, reserve a decent chunk of mana here. Though once we grab mind over matter, I'm gonna drop off the clarity because our mana pool should be large enough that we don't need the uh, increase to the regen anymore because that will be compensated for by the increase in size and the uh, side effect of the naturally occurring mana regeneration. Hey, as I mentioned at the end of the last episode, we are playing the new and improved sewers. Which are much better than the old ones, because they are much shorter. And then we have Mind Over Matter. Whenever we will take damage from our life, not energy shield, just life, then instead 30% will be taken from our mana before it's taken for life. If there's no mana, then we take the damage from our life as normal. But it does mean that the uh, unreserved mana we have effectively becomes virtual bonus life. There is the uh, first of the three busts. They're all down here in the uh, single instance of the sewers. So the, the blockage and the waypoint are still here. That's, that's the same as always. But if we're lucky, we should be able to pick up these uh, three busts rather quickly. If we're not as lucky, then it might take a while. Also, where did my zombies go? Let's convoke them. Ha <laughs> ha also, a silk gloves level 26. This might be a good opportunity to uh, use the uh, orb of binding once we make it back to town to craft ourselves a first up to four link item. Okay, they did damage our minions a little bit here, so let's do some recovering. Most of the time the exit is somewhere to the top left. So we'll see if the uh, final bust is going to be around here somewhere. Making it nice and convenient. Or whether we need to do a little bit of running back and forth to grab it. Because it is still a skill point after all. And skill points are rather useful. Contrary to the old behavior of Mind Over Matter, it now also helps you uh, to protect you against damage over time. So, poison in specific, which of course bypasses your energy shield, is nicely guarded against using Mind Over Matter. And it will just result in a uh, gentle degen of your mana, but most likely your natural regeneration will outstrip it. So, effectively that means 30% less poison damage taken on your life. So with three busts, that means we can move forward. If this then also happens to contain the exit, I will be thrilled. And it does exit. It's always nice when things just work out. Okay, then we exit in the marketplace. And something dropped. A orb of alteration. So we have the place with Marseilles Lion Eye right there. Marseilles the defaced. And also, maybe I should just move out a little bit. Minions, protect me. Oh, Harbinger. Lovely. Okay, one, two, minions. Bone offering. And then we'll just continue summoning Morphix. That didn't quite look healthy. 
Also, someone managed to uh, murder most of my zombies. Let's re up the account there. Zombies. And then deal with this guy. I mean, he's got arcing uh, from his tempest shield, which is rather gnarly for minions in, in general. But yeah. For my uh, some of my previous characters, Mercedes was actually a pretty easy fight. And here, it turns out he was a, bit, a, bit, a little bit more challenging. But it is always nice to see that different builds have different strengths and weaknesses. Ah, there is the waypoint. Oh, indeed, it is really close now. So in the past, this always used to be on the other side of the road. And then now they moved it inside of the, uh, the road here. Just in order to optimize things a little further. Very likely that this is the uh, exactly the catacombs. We need to go in here for one of our trials, so let's do that. And after this, we can continue on with. Hey, yeah, cool. Okay, slight change of plans. Let's help Haku. This has a very much uh, Solaris Temple feel to it. It's a bit of a quiet version of Solaris because there's just no one in here to cause trouble. There the enemy minions show their face. Okay, and what is it? Tahi. Okay. What? I'll just stand aside here. Just try to stand aside, I said. Come on, leave me alone. I got minions. Play with the minions. I think this is probably one of the more dangerous of the uh, Haku encounters with the teleporting totems. Uh, especially if you're not playing with a, uh, a minion build. And it is very likely that you're gonna end up in a situation where there, more of them will just try to stomp your face and hurt you quite a lot in the process. And they can do a surprising amount of damage, especially if more of them land on you at the same time. And then it's a, a nice little burst. I did manage to lose one of my carriages that way. At some point in the past. Also, the dude is done. So all we have left is the spirit. So now we can simply run. Blah. It's a little bit too, re too much reanimation for my taste though. It's nice that the first room here contained no monsters. Since that means nothing is going to get summoned upon us. And Haku is now level 3. So that means we can obtain ourselves a hideout though. It's it's not a Hellion hideout, though, uh, of course, that's it, we can no, go for Haku first, and then once we get Elrion at 3, we'll just upgrade our hideout to one that looks better. Um, zombies, yeah, let's get some zombies going. Okay, we're back at 5, and there is the Thrial. Listen to some ancient graffiti while we do that. There is nothing eternal in this empire of ours, but the names of our day that shall be revered or reviled in the centuries to come. Just to hit the lever and move on. And then leave it to the uh, skeletons. The, the opposing skeletons, that is, to just get murderized by the evil Roombas. Teleport definitely helps you get around in places like these. Also, Essence Mob. Okay, convoke everything in here. Get some corpses going. Totem, precasting a little bit. Go. Okay, bone offering. Good. Ah, 
think boat offering is going to be pretty darn nice for the survivability of our minions. Because they get a chance to block attacks and spells, so that means less damage taken. But also whenever they block, they gain some life. It's not a, not a lot. Oh, hey, wait. That's how it used to work. Is that something that was completely removed? No, oh, minions recover 38 life when they block. Yeah, okay. So it's it's still there. The description is just a little little faulty. Okay. Oh, hey, ghost meet rare. Go possess exactly like that. Lovely. Okay, let's uh, go go prophecy and we actually killed the ghost. Oh, that's a first. And of course, full inventory. So let's empty some pockets. I mean, there is no boss in the uh, catacombs to defeat, so there's no real point in going all the way to the final room. Okay. Oh, skill point. Let's assign that. 12% more mana. That's just lovely. Then put in more shards. We have the Orb of Binding, which we're going to use to bind this. But first, let's just sort things away a little bit more. Oh, yeah. I mentioned um, Clarity is going to go away. And also, if we're not using clarity, might as well unbind it here and give discipline the force field bubble. Yeah, the clarity. Yeah, nexus of souls. We don't really want it anymore. You don't have to do it because your empty access are now account bound rather than bound specifically to the items. So even if you throw away the item, it doesn't really matter. Just on another character, you equip the gem and then you can just reuse it again. Should be fine. Um, where did we put it though? Discipline, convocation, clarity, yes, exactly. Right, let's see, put those away. Okay, we get some gloves, might as well put some quality on them. Like that. And then use an orb of binding. Upgrade a normal item to a rare item with up to four linked sockets. Bam. So what did we get? We got 14% fire resist, 70% lightning resist and oh, some mana, which now counts as effectively virtually as life. So there's that. The old one didn't have anything, so that is good. Let's see, flame dash, arcane search, faster casting. See, in this setup, eventually, I think this is actually the three link we wanted here. So, there's that. Is there anything in terms of color that we would want from our gloves? A wither spell totem would have double red, double blue. And cast some damage taken is double red, a green and a blue. So this is not a color that it would be useful. So let's see what we can make of it. Triple blue and a green for now. That is okay. Then we can just keep the uh, flame dash in it. Do we have a, a green support gem to attach? Blind. Lovely. Does it make sense? No, but if we're dashed through monsters and we blind them, then sure, it's going to be fine. doesn't really matter. Just the placeholder. Okay, so then we can go back down to the catacombs, pick up the couple of items that we still had lying about. And then we might as well portal back to the marketplace, because that is from where we need to leave. So we know this one was over there, so we can just follow, basically go counterclockwise from here see if it leads us to the exit chances are that I actually have to be somewhere on the left side of the map and that I'm taking a little bit of a detour here but detours are okay 
Level 26 area, I am 27, which means, of course, I'm not as overleveled as I was in Act 2. Reason for that is I've been going through at a fairly decent tempo. Only stopping to smell the roses occasionally, such as we are about to do now with the uh, Val area. Um, I need to be on the other side of the housing block. This is yet another one of those things that the new minimap system shows us. Because I probably would have missed this under the old minimap because it was a little too far away. With the new content getting added to the to the game in no, Act 5 through 10, we also get some new corrupted mobs that will show up in the corrupted file areas. At least from what I understand, they're going to be tied to those areas. I highly doubt we're going to see any more of the Val bosses before then, of the new ones that is. But there is now an achievement for, or a, a challenge, to killing a number of the new ones. This is probably going to be the uh, Cold Queen. I mean, there's often the Cold Queen in an area like this. But we'll see if that is uh, indeed accurate or not. Sometimes you get a fire queen here as well. Uh, you need it's uh, Rima the Deep Temptress. That's the cold queen. Okay. So a totem that summons minions, manually summoning some minions. It's uh, enough to take down the queen. Uh, we got a four socket tribal circlet thing. Also very nice. So, any useful. It's just a bonus to energy shield, not a bonus to minions. So, not a gonna be quite what we want. Also, again, someone, someone killed my zombies. I did think we made a pay for it. A Val Stone Call, and then back to the marketplace, and onwards to the battleground. For a no, flame dash, if you want to add a random support gem to it, I think Calling Strike might be useful. Then, well, if you dash through something that has less than 10% life remaining, then you can actually finish it off. Other than that, it's not really a lot of useful support gems to make it more expensive and to trigger the uh, essence search more reliably. We still need to make it for more expensive. Wow, people have reached the volcano already. That's a tier 14 map. Ah, tier 15? Ah, I think tier 14. And another harbinger. It, they, I must say, the harbingers show up less often than I had expected them to. That looks like a storm call. But yeah, they, they show up a little less often than I had expected them to be. Might be chance, might be the lower levels and that they will crank it up further into the game. Ooh. There we are. Multiple offensive skills. And that, I think, meant I took down all the variations that at least you see early on in the game. I've only had a quick look at the achievements to see if there were any unique bosses or something I had to kill. But that won't be until we get to the new content. So from Act 5 forward, or basically the end of Act 4, because uh, the transition to Act 5 is also a new bit of content. We are going to have to kill all the guaranteed named unique monsters in the game. So that is something I'll basically use as a little bit of a, a list of, of um, areas to go through and to see who to kill and who to look out for. Okay. 
Okay, there's our waypoint. So let's head on over to the uh, to the docks. We did get the ribbon spool exactly. Okay, another caster. That's a good call to go for. Murder champion, the depraved. What a lovely name. That one you picked yourself, or did your parents start out like, yeah, you know, we're just gonna name our kid Murder Champion. That, that's a, it's a good name for, for a baby. Yeah. Some of the, uh, of the names are a little interesting if you consider them from that perspective. See, is this gonna be the way forward? Yeah, yeah, we got a way forward here. Lovely. Nope. I've got minions to tank for me, so please do. See, we are level 28, so technically we can use Dark Pact. No, we will be a little patient and just grab it when we unlock it. Which is either going to be when we kill General Gravesis or when the library is completed. I think it's going to be Gravesis. That's most of the level 28 gems if I remember correctly. Four chocolate mage's vestments. Well, I, I think I would like one of those. Let's empty our pockets. So we'll uh, extend the length of this episode yeah, to at least defeat General Gravities. And then next episode we can get started using Dark Pact from uh, the get-go. Okay, nothing truly exciting there. This one we wanted to use, this is a card, this one we want to use, and that one is a, a Valgem. So, all nicely sorted away. We're ready for more loot. Oh. Why am I even casting those? For some reason, I had it in my mind to uh, just refresh the zombies, and instead I started casting Raging Spirits. That's not entirely the way to, to go. So this is a dead end that is not helping us much either, but there is a exclamation point on the other side. So we were not too far off. Let's grab that, that's the sulfite. So combine that lovely this way. And then we can move forward. So we, all we need here is a waypoint. Technically we could skip it because we did get the prize we came for. But we will probably want to do a little bit of dealings with Captain Fairgrave. Just to have the quest completed. Oh, corrupted side area. Elemental equilibrium and the boss is a bit faster and stronger. Okay. The uh, docks version of the uh, corrupted areas. Level 30. That is nice. Means I'm under leveled. Which is good for my XP gains. It's also good for dropping items I can't actually use yet. Okay. Bone offering. Technically you could say, well, maybe just run around a little bit more with... Um, flash offering like we had in the beginning just to boost my offensive capabilities rather than focusing on my defenses but in this case no it's the skill that we end up using and I do unlike leveling with skills I end up using ok 
Okay, passive skill point is going to be 100 mana and 40% increased mana. So we went from 440 to 746 uh, total mana. So yeah, that is a very nice. Hello there, we require the ancient guardian. We require the unseen. Let's uh, put some bone armor against it. Thing is, you don't have to see it if you just have the advantage of numbers. We're now using 19 mana, so we're getting closer. Always closer. And some colossal life. Well, actually, I might just pick up the colossal mana as well. And a Val Lightning Warp. The uh, fun thing about Val Lightning Warp is that it makes you teleport away the enemies around you rather than yourself. I think it's a, a nice choice for a Val skill to change what is being teleported rather than doing more damage or something like that. Uh, pick that one up as well. And then we are full again. You know what, we'll just put this in the bin and deal with it later. Twenty-eight percent, it's close enough to max. And there is our waypoint. Good, so we can move back to the battlefront and from here head over to Solaris Temple. Slar Temple now has two waypoints, one on level 1 and one on level 2. Again, it's uh, something that has to do with some of the events in Act 8. So a lot of small small tweaks to the, uh, to the world, just for some uh, convenience and uh, story reasons in part 2 of the story. many damage so it's gonna be soon once we grab dark pact that of course we will be saying goodbye to the raging spirits they have served us very faithfully they have been a very nice tool at our disposal a weapon in our arsenal oh yeah black guards and tapestries they don't like each other they now vehemently display that dislike Just wake up some things. Better. Of course, Black Arts are more of a AAA Lunaris Temple thing. The uh, Tapestries are, of course, a Solaris thing. And there is a little bit of enmity between the uh, Solaris and Lunars. The sun and the moon, day and night, has a quite a overarching theme there. And a bit later on, we will see more about that. I'd love to see the insides of this spell. I can't abide housework. Okay, again, our zombos are getting a little torn up. No, well, technically, I could just convoke them every once in a while because you do give them a little bit of life regeneration for uh, two seconds. Two whole seconds. But I guess it is a heal. Okay, we have an army. And ooh, strong box. What's in a box? Ice Nova, pack of mobs, seven items, one additional rare, and it ignites me when activated. I believe I did have a burning removal. Good. Yeah, the tapestries have a no chance here. Ooh, mirror arrow, it's a drop only. That's a nice one. No, we're not playing a bow build, so it doesn't really matter. 
it is still nice though to find some of those things that are drop only. Speaking of drop only gems, the added chaos damage gem is probably one of the strongest bonuses that we can have to this build after the uh, usual streak of more damage multipliers. And especially before we start adding a lot of bonuses to our damage, it's uh, gonna be rather nice. So if we find one, then that's gonna be nice. If not, well, too bad. Oh yes, there's actually a, a new location as well for the for the waypoint. And this is the first time I'm going through the story again from the start since I completed Act 8. So I'm now seeing and noticing things that I hadn't before because, of course, sometimes you, you know putting things to, uh, together in hindsight is a bit more difficult than actually having seen the thing and then going back and then putting it in context. Yeah. So, Vorici, what do you want? Kill something within the time limits. Okay. Point at me. Back, yeah, okay, so I have to actually backtrack a little. We haven't unlocked Vrici yet, so doing so seems like a wise idea. Hope we just don't have to go back too far. Still one of the downsides that they spawn mobs after the fact. Okay, someone is summoning. Is that uh, Minara Anaminia? Well, you fellow witch. Mistress of the Dark Arts. You are die, are dead. And 20% cold rest. What am I thinking? That's not even worth picking up. Hey, upside is we did unlock Vorici. So there's that. So now we can move forward. Let's see. Convoke the things. And set up some more damage. Hey, a harbinger. It's been too long. Okay, not the self. Let's just step aside here. Infernal seal. Oh, that's also uh, rather lovely. Holding up with the bosses, eh? And there we are. All dead. As a side effect, we also managed to kill the Infernal Seal and the Voltaic Seal. And let's do some shuffling here so we fit the larger items into our backpack first. We can always pick up the smaller things. But pockets once again have to be emptied. Uh, as I said, so far it feels like we're off to a pretty decent start in terms of just the sheer amount of gear that's dropping and currently and things like that. Hello, Ferrici. You are now easily accessible for selling things. That is also very nice. In Act 3, without either Vegan or Ferrici to have access, uh, um, to have as a convenient. Uh, shopping location. Always, it, it feeling walking to Hagen always feels like such a long trip. I know it, it, it's only two seconds longer, but it, it 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 feels like it's such a long long trip, especially if you don't have any movement speed on your boots yet. Because well, early game. It's also interesting to consider that we just fought a Harbinger inside of the Solaris Temple, which is supposedly all about purity and things like that. Uh, I believe in, in the past, now things like uh, the uh, uh, Talisman League, where Solaris Temple, I think, was immune to the Talisman uh, mobs. They were not spawning there because it was such a, a pure area. So it's interesting to consider that the uh, Harbingers Hello, Harbinger. Are most definitely not uh, excluded from this place, which you know, indicates they're at least not evil aligned. They're just something different altogether. Which yeah, might just be difficult to even put into 
perspective into terms of uh, good and evil. Also, yeah, tapestries they hurt the uh, flame sentinels. Luckily, they hurt my minions more than me. Okay, Arcanist, that is lovely. Actually, I have a couple of transmutes. Ooh, six additional currencies. That is nice. Stream of monsters. So I'll just uh, take a blind step back and let the uh, minions do all the work. And another level. Lovely. 30. <laughs> Shouting out all the orbs. It is great. Chaos, chaos, uh, help me, help me, Scorp. Okay, so Mind Over Matter has been acquired. Next goal is probably gonna be... Let's go for the quick recovery just to boost our mana regeneration even further. Get us a little bit of life regeneration, which is going to be nice for dealing with little little bits of chaos damage or whatever pierces our energy shield to just get some passive background regeneration of that. And after that, we are going to increase the size of our uh, minion pool. And hello there, goddess. I don't think you are one of the real gods here, though. Or is she maybe the, the true evil behind everything? Hmm? Could be some epic level of foreshadowing. Well, just running through, running through. Okay, I think we got enough enemies together now. Let's uh, do some murderizing. Lovely. So, uh, we should be getting close to the waypoint. This this feels like it's the approach to the waypoint. And there we are. Indeed. Lady Diala. We will, uh, I think, Dex was my biggest gap right now. And let's grab the Infernal Talk. Spell damage, attributes, cold rest, life gain or kill. So I lose a bit of life, lose some uh, attributes across the board, but gain some spell damage and gain some cold resist interesting can we even do it we we can okay cool so it's just interesting to see just how uh over spec'd i am in terms of attributes i do like having some uh, some wiggle room there um, it's empty pockets and then we're gonna move forward so now we you can sell to verici that we might as well and ooh, dual resists but in total are slightly higher than the old one. So just uh, hang on to them and then do a little bit of a better compare down the line. Okay, now let's go for general gravities and obtain ourselves a dark pact. Okay, one way point. Okay, maybe I should not be standing in front of things that try to murder me. We have minions for that. Exactly like that. Oh, strong box. Uh, sure. We'll magicify it. It costs Ice Nova. 
Ah, I did not step too far. I right, just one tile off. Funny enough. And more discipline means more energy shields. Great. And no, nope, not quite the general. That's gonna be the next set of stairs. Convoke all the onions. Convoke is such a handy skill. I really like it. Purify you in flame. Ah, too much flames. Too much flames. And there we are. I fight for myself. Thank you very much for asking. But the important bit is Maramoa. Give it to me. Give it to me now. Dark backed. We have it. A spell removes some life from one of your skeleton minions near you or the targeted location to deal chaos damage in an area around it. This effect will chain to your other nearby skeletons. If you have no skeletons near you or the targeted location, it will sacrifice your own life to deal damage instead. It has a base amount of chaos damage, 20 to 30 at level 1, sacrifices 6% of your skeleton's life to deal that much chaos damage, chains 2 times or plus 2 times, uses your life if no skeletons in range, plus 4 radius if using your life. Starting from level 2, there is going to be a more uh, a, a more spell damage modifier multiplier on here for sacrificing your own life so we have acquired it next episode we are gonna play with it this just gives me a good opportunity in between episodes to shift all of my gems around and do maybe some some crafting and things just to make sure things are set up according to something that we can play with. So the next episode is gonna go nice and smooth. So with that, I'm gonna thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again next time when we check out Dark Pact. Bye bye.